Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. See, I dare you to open your heart up to God. He will come in. And that's what he's done here today. Oh, not many of us here. But the Spirit of God is here. And that's what's important. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We thank you. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for transforming our lives. And I just want to say to the Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. You're welcome in this temple. And we thank you, Lord, for tabernacling with us. We want to say welcome to you to turn the point mission center church i'm pastor arnett hallelujah pastor arnett the only we want to welcome you to turning point mission center church a church where god's spirit abides hallelujah he's here right now also a place where god loves abide and we just want to thank god for being here we want to thank you saints that are pressed your way to be here and we want to just lift up all those who will join us when our service is recast. We want to thank you for tuning in. And we just want to thank God again for his faithfulness. God is a faithful God. And God is so good. You look at what's going on in the world and over there, how that big earthquake took place. But he has protected us. And they've had all types of forecasts this week for inclement weather. But God has blessed and preserved us each time. And I just want to say, Lord, I thank you. I want to thank the Lord for giving us traveling grace and mercy for getting here. I want to thank the Lord for watching over last night. I want to thank the Lord he didn't let the death angel come in. I want to thank the Lord he didn't let an intruder come in. I just want to thank God. Not only he care for me and taking care of me, but he has blessed you and your family and so many others. And I am grateful because God is faithful. And I just want to encourage my sisters and brothers that we must learn to praise God regardless because God is good. We don't need to limit our praise when things are going well for us because God is soon to come back and he's making up his jewels now. And I don't want to miss out on my heaven home. I don't want to miss out on living with Christ for eternity. eternity. But we got to prepare now. We got to prepare to live again. We got to do it now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. While the spirit is still high, we're going to ask Deaconess Ghana, she'll come with our intercessor prayer. And with everybody that can to bow as we go to the Lord in prayer. And those that are joining us, if you can, please pray now also. Our world is in trouble. Hallelujah. But there's still power in prayer. So I invite you right now to join us in prayer. Just pour your heart out to God. And God says you're here. And as I call, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Think of the goodness. When I think about all the ways you made. When I think about your protection. When I think about your covering. My soul cries, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh God, you're so great. You're mighty, Lord. You're awesome, God. Hallelujah. You're great in all your ways, Lord. Hallelujah. Your mercy. Oh, forever, hallelujah, 
from the depth of my soul, Lord, from the bottom of my heart, Lord, from the innermost parts, Lord, I cry hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Can't nobody tell me about your goodness because I experienced it for myself. The word said, oh, taste and see. Oh, taste and see. Woo, thank you, Jesus. Woo, that's why I can't help but to praise your name today, Lord, because you are worthy, Lord. You're worthy of it all, God. And nobody deserves more praise than you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. For even in your word, Lord. As we read your word, Lord. God, you even show us in your word how you even there with us, Lord. You talk to us and you speak to us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your word, Lord God. In the moments of despair, Lord. In the moments that we feel like we're defeated, Lord. In the moments of strength, Lord God. In the moments, Lord God, where we feel like we all alone, Lord. You show yourself strong each and every time, God. You speak to us in ways, Lord, that's not unimaginable, Lord God. Ways that we can't even fathom, Lord God. Oh God, we thank you, Lord. You said we can come to you about any and everything, Lord God. Just like me and my Lord. When he came and he always had a prayer, Lord, before he did anything, Lord. Let us be reminded of that, Lord God. That we should always approach your throne, Lord God. We can come and talk to you about any problems, Lord. Whatever we're facing, God. You're right there with us, Lord God. You never left our side, Lord. Even when we turn our backs on you, you were still right there, Lord God. God, we thank you, Lord, for being almighty. For being all powerful, for being all knowing, Lord God. Even when Satan is trying to stir up his ways of wickedness, Lord God, his ways of deception, Lord God, his ways of defeat, God, you're still right there with us, Lord God. All we have to do is just trust you, God. My Lord, yes, Lord Jesus. That's all you ask us to do is just trust you. Not with just the big things, but even with the little things, God. You just want our trust, Lord. So that you can just show yourself mighty and strong in our lives, God. God, thank you so much. There's so much going on in this world today, Lord God. Evil is forever present, Lord. It's on every side, Lord. Whether we turn to the left or the right, whether we look up or down, Lord, it's right there, Lord God. But God, we just thank you for your protection, not only over us, but our families, Lord God, for our friends, Lord God. But even in our areas, Lord, when we go to sleep at night, Lord, you protect us. You protect our children, Lord. You protect our families, God. God, your faithfulness to us is never failing, Lord God. Then, God, that's why we just praise you. Because your faithfulness, it never fails. Your grace is always your mercy is always enduring, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord. Thank you so much, God. You told us about the things to come, Lord. And these things that are happening are just a testament of your soon return, Lord. 
Let us forever to keep our hands on the gospel plow, Lord, until you return, Lord. Let us forever keep working, Lord God. Let us continue to work in the fields, Lord, until your soon return, Lord. You know everything and all things. And all because you know these things, Lord, we still can come to you, Lord, and make our petitions known to you, Lord. So for those that have known and unknown, Lord, those things that they only speak to you about in a whisper, Lord, Father, stand in the gap with them, Lord. Show your hand strong, Lord. Show yourself mighty in that situation, God. Whatever it may be, Lord, whether we fight battles in our mind, in our health, in our relationships, on the job, in our families, whatever it is, financially, Lord God, whatever those battles are, Lord. We pray and ask that you will stand with us, Lord, and show yourself strong, God. And that we'll continue to trust in your word, because it never fails. We thank you, Father. Thank you for the word that's going to come forth today, Lord. Thank you for this sweet presence, Lord. You just dwell in here with us, Lord. For I was heavy, Lord God, all this week, all last week, just heavy, Lord. But I decided this morning, I said, Lord, ain't nothing going to weigh me down to keep me from keeping me I want to testify about your goodness because you are great, Lord. Nothing should hinder our praise, Lord. Nothing should hinder us from giving you praise, Lord, because you are worthy of it all, Lord. And we're so grateful to you, God. Thank you so much, Lord, for your love, your unconditional love, Lord God. Thank you, God. And as Father, we ask for these things in your name, Lord. Because you are worthy, you are great, and you are mighty. We thank you, Lord. And we'll forever praise your name. And we ask for these things in your Son, Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. The one who died for my sins. Our sins. He gave up the ghost on my behalf, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you for that ultimate sacrifice. We thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, it feels so good to be in God's presence. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Nothing like being in his presence with other believers. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We invite him to come in and he is here. He is here. Glory be to God. I want to thank Deaconess Garner for that heartfelt, powerful prayer. Hallelujah. Heaven, I believe, been moved and opened up and things are lining up to put those answers in position. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want to ask everyone to stand. Amen, amen. Lift every voice and sing. And we can sing as a people because of the lesson we've learned from the past. And the hope we have in Jesus now and his word. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We want to just thank God for each of you here. We want to thank God again for that powerful prayer that came forth by Deacon Garner. And that word that was read with power and might by Elder Monica. And now we invite you all to worship and giving.
as Elder Monica come forth with our stewardship spotlight for today, we want to just ask you all to prepare your heart to worship the Lord in giving. Elder Monica. Chronicles 9, 29, 11, and 12. However large or small our possessions, they are ours only in trust. That's it. For our life, strength, skill, time, talents, opportunities, and means, we must render an account to God. Men seem to think that they have the right to do with their means just as it pleases them, no matter what the Lord has commanded or what they may or what they may be the need of their fellow men. They forget that all they claim as theirs has simply been entrusted to them. Amen. amen. Our money has not been given us that we might honor and glorify ourselves. As faithful stewards, we are to use it for the honor and glory of God. All we possess is the Lord's, and we are accountable to him for the use we make of it. That's right. Praise the Lord. That's In the use of every penny, it will be seen whether we love God supremely and our neighbors as ourselves. Money has great value because it can do great good. That's right. In the hands of God's children, Water. it is food for the hungry, yes. drink for the thirsty, uh -huh. and clothing for the naked. My, my, my. It is a defense for the oppressed mm. and a mean of help to the sick. But money is of no more value than sand, only as it put to use in providing for the necessities of life, in blessing others, and advancing the cause of Christ. Let us surrender ourselves a living sacrifice and give our all to Jesus. It is his. It is his. We are his purchased possession. Thank you, Those Lord. who are recipient Thank of his you, grace, who yes. contemplate the cross of Calvary, will not question concerning the proportion to be given, but will feel that the richest offering is all too meager, all disproportionate to the great gift of the only begotten Son of the infinite God. Through self-denial, the poorest, we find ways of obtaining something to give back to God. Amen. I encourage you today to be a faithful steward. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Elder Monica. Amen. Praise the Lord. And now we're going to ask the goodness of God that she'll come and receive our offering today. Praise the Lord. And little Raylene going to give her a hand, I believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. The word to let us know we ought to bring all our tithes into the storehouse of the Lord. Because it all belongs to him, as Elder Monica said. We're just stewards over it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. How you want us to do, El? Digging this. The word said, Will a man rob God? Yet you've robbed me. But you said, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offering. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now here with says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. It's all been served here. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this privilege you've given us to worship you and our giving. Lord, we know all yours and we count a joy just to be entrusted. And that shows that you can trust us, Lord. And we're giving back what's yours and we're doing it with joy. And Father, if anyone is in the house who had not to give, please, Father, move in their hearts and move on their resources they would have to give and then give it cheerfully. 
And Father, we just ask you to take what has been given unto you, multiply it, increase it, so it may be used to further this work here at Turning for Mission Center Church. And Lord, we know you're soon to return, so help us be found faithful, laboring until you call us to rest or you crack the clouds. Again, we thank you for the privilege of being able to return our tithes and offering back to you and to wish you now our giving. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If God doesn't do it, my sister and brother, it can't be done. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Lord, we stand on your promises, and we just want to thank you, Lord. We invite you to come. You are here. Oh, God, we feel your presence. Lord God, I ask you to speak to me and through me, Lord. I ask you to glorify yourself through me, Lord. I ask you to just use me, Lord God. I empty myself, Lord. Have your way, Lord God. Speak to your people, Lord God. Let them hear you speak to them and let them receive this word. Oh, God, be glorified. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be used by you as your instrument, as your servant. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And thank Elder Monica again for reading this word. We're looking at the book of Exodus chapter 1. Verses and we're going to springboard from verses 12 through 14 and Romans chapter 15, verse 13. So, if you would please uh, quickly find that, and I'm going to stick my try to get to it too. That's uh, Exodus chapter 1, verses uh, 12 through 14. I'll be reading your hearing in Romans 15, 13. The word of God says, But the more they afflict them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field. All their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor. And then Romans Chapter 15, verse 13 said, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. For your consideration, we're going to speak on the subject. There is hope. There is hope. Thank you, Lord God. There is hope. I thank God for this word today because it blessed my heart as I was studying God was giving me insight and leading me to different parts of the scripture and also history this is our black history month we want to give God praise for each of you that are here thank God for our elders that are here our deacon deaconess and to you our members and to all our sister brothers in Christ to those who will be joining us when this service is recast there is hope the word hope it's a very important word. It is a word of optimism, a word of cheerfulness, and expectation. It can also be a feeling of trust or a desire or want for something to happen. We all need hope, Dignity Garner. Hope about many different things in life. And when you have hope, you do anticipate, Elder Monica, we expect. And we look forward to something or we have feeling of trust or faith. On the other hand, Sister Michelle, when we have no hope, there is a sense of dread. You find yourself in the filter and mire of something that you can't quite put your finger on. But, and, and, and you begin to question life. Why am I living? What am I living for? Why does it bother? Why even bother? Or I don't matter. No one cares. It's hopeless. I can't do it. And unfortunately, there are a lot of people today who do not have hope. People with no hope is living 
in the swamp in the sense of existing but going nowhere. They're just there. Well, I stopped by to tell you today, there is hope. There is hope. And um, sometimes we feel that no one cares. Nobody is interested in, in your feelings, your thoughts. You make recommendations. It, they are ignored. Is that not you even there? You're talking to your spouse. They don't even act like they hear you. You're talking to the children. They seem to ignore you. You talk to people or other in your family, even your church family. Sometimes you seem to be disregarded or disrespected or even like don't even exist. There's a feeling of despair moving throughout the land. Perhaps you have had uh, all kinds of experiences and you have been hurt to your core. And because you've been hurt by people you trusted, you've been hurt by the people that should have protected you, your faith and confidence have now been shattered. Many people, especially our youth, have lost hope. And that's why many of our young people are rebelling, why they're turning to drugs, sex, crimes, and other things when they look to the future, they see no hope. Unfortunately, millions of people are living today without hope. Many are tempted to give up. There is a spirit of hopelessness and helplessness. I said there is a spirit of hopelessness and helplessness. They are living with a spirit of despair and defenseless. They feel overwhelmed by their situation and they don't feel there's no one there to even fight or to defend them. And I know our world is rapidly being destroyed by sin, wickedness, and just downright evil. The love of God is diminishing in the hearts of people, even those who call themselves Christians. We have so many people labeled Christian, and they're just evil. They do things, they say things without even seeming to have any concern about how their words impact other people. Satan is having a field day in destroying people's lives and the foundation of our society. And people are being used by Satan don't even realize that they are being used and they are, being, they are harming others. And as I said, this is Black History Month, and our theme for our month is the struggles continue. And as I was praying this week, asking God, so Lord, what would you have me to tell your people? What scripture, where I springboard from, where I go? And he led me to start reading the book of Exodus. And, 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 and as I was reading, I came back to chapter 1. And, and as been said here, and I'm going to start with, verse 12. It's Exodus chapter 1 verse 12 says, but the more they afflict them, the more they grew and they were grieved because of the children of Israel. And the Egyptian made the children of Israel to serve rigor and they made their life bitter and hard bondage. All that, they made them to serve them in all manner of service in the field and they served them and made them serve a rigor. And I couldn't help but think about us as a race, us as a race of black people. And um, we know the story. God used Joseph to bless the whole world at that point in time. And because Joseph had gone through a lot of hardship, Joseph was sold into slavery by his own uh, brothers. Joseph was even chastised by his father for believing what God had shown him. God had told Joseph he was going to be a mighty man. He was going to bless the whole world through him. And he, God showed Joseph even his parents were going to bow down to him. And his daddy re rebuked him about that. And we got to be careful when we rebuke people about what they say. Because God can be, God can use anyone. He can use a donkey. So God can use anyone. And we got to be proudful that when God speaks, we have the ears to hear and recognize God's voice. And as we look here, we see how Joseph had died and 
as his all well, his father Jacob died first, and then Joseph had died, and all his brothers died, and 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 they were that generation was all gone. And now a new king come on the scene, a new Pharaoh come on the scene. This new king didn't know anything about Joseph. It wasn't that he didn't want to know because I'm sure it was all in the history book. But he didn't know anything about Joseph. He didn't have no regard for Joseph. But he did realize that God was blessing Joseph's ancestors. He realized that God was blessing Joseph's people, the children of Israel. Because we know the story. God changed Jacob's name from Jacob to Israel. And that's why the children of Israel. And we know this is all a promise. God has made many promises. He's made promises to us. Some of our promises have been fulfilled. And we, we'll be celebrating some of those promises of fulfillment later on this year. But God is good. And, 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 and Joseph and all that generation have died out. So this new king comes on the scene. And he recognized that this group of people, because see, because of the gratitude of uh, Pharaoh, he gave Joseph and his family the land called Gosha. And that's where they lived, digging this garner. And then they were free people. They were their land. They were able to freely plant and grow and live off the land. And God kept blessing and multiplying. And you know the thing about that? The promise God made was to Abraham. And the, the promise being fulfilled down to his seed. But... We also know that promise was conditional to a degree too. Because when you turn your back on God, God will move his hedge of protection from around you. And God will allow things to happen to you. And that's what God did. Because even though they were growing mightily, they had stopped serving God. They began to get caught up with the religions around them. And we know the Egyptians, they worship a lot of different gods. And they worship even the Nile River. So we got to be careful and make sure we don't worship the gifts and the ministry God has given us and stop worshiping God. He said, for Satan, not the similar saint to God, we're supposed to come to church. But we don't supposed to make the building coming here more greater than our service to God and our love and devotion to him. So this new king, he looked around and he saw in verse 7 say, how fruitful they were and how they increased abundantly and how they multiplied and how they waxed exceedingly and mighty and how they just filled the land. And he said, you know, these people are greater than us. They, they're more than we are and there will be a war breakout. They can join themselves with our enemy and be de we defeated. Or the other point, always money coming in, always money. Or they can get mad and leave. And we'll be in trouble because our economy will be in trouble because they had their economy built upon them working and, and giving back to them. And see, we got that same thing now. That's how slavery came. We worked all those years for no pay. But they benefit greatly. And the South especially. All that cotton and tobacco and stuff. We did all that slave labor for no pay. But abuse. So I, I see a lot of similarity here with the children of Israel and us as a race. And when your state governor called the capital city of the state the murder capital of the world rather than using their office power to find a solution. I'm talking about there's hope. Or when your state legislators want to set up two classes of judicial system, one for white and one for black citizens. Or when your state legislator wants to take control of the capital city water system now that there's been millions of dollars appropriated to address decades of, of water-related issues. All those years this problem going on, nobody will put money. But now that the federal government, now that there's money, all of a sudden they don't have sense enough to be able to handle the problem. I went part of a, I went part of a major, one of the major political parties spread lies or promote policies to hurt the poor while seeking to pass the legislature to reward the rich or seeking to take away Social Security and Medicare. Or when your state leaders don't want to, uh, want schools to examine social and equality through the lens of historical racial issues and racial injustice. Some state schools have even censored 
what black history can be taught in the classrooms. Or when the governor of Florida rejects an AP African American study class because he says it has no educational value. If you don't know black history, then you don't know America history. There is no way to untangle, there's no way to detangle the contributions and the struggles and the triumph of black people in this nation from its inception. Many states are willing to erase the struggle and racism of every single policy decision that have been made in this nation. And not just about, it's not just about white supremacy, but it's also about specific anti-blackness that have been entrenched in every single practice and policy of this nation. So if you try to erase this, then you're giving, uh, you're, then you're not giving anyone an accurate picture of the United States of America history. Not just black people, but all people. So I said, there is hope. There is hope because God has a plan. God gives us hope in spite of our opposition, tribulation, injustice, marginalization, setback, and failures. No matter what we go through, God is still the liberator. Hallelujah! God is still the liberator. And he gives us hope to bounce back. So they don't understand, Sister Michelle, how the more they press us, how the more resilient we become. They don't understand how when they put their uh, knee on our neck and try to hold us back, somebody else come back greater and stronger than the one you took out. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. They don't understand. No matter what we go through, God will uh, be the liberator. And he will give us the power to bounce back. Hallelujah. Thank you, Neil. Thank you, Lord. God is the emancipator. And there is so much similarity in the story of the Israelites and the other black race. Now, as a people, we know what God is able to do. No other race has been treated and have experienced the humane treatment and abuse like the black race. Almost 400 years in slavery. But yet, we were resilient. Yet, we, God gave us mind to do things that blows their mind still. We are overcomers. And in spite of what people say or do or try to hold us back, we still rise up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And see, that's what's going on. It's that fear of our strong, our strength. It's the fear of our mind. It's a fear of our intellect. It's a fear of our bold and our tenacity. They are terrified of us. And, and, and the word lets us know whatever you sow, so shall we reap. And that's why they're so afraid. They, they, they were terrified when we elected the first black president. But of course, he didn't do them like they did us. In fact, he bent over backward to give them benefit of the doubt. Sometimes he should have been putting his foot down. He would be in lenient. And, and, and we look here in the word it says, but the more they afflict them, the more they multiplied and grew. And so I just want you to know, despite of our struggles and injustice, there is hope. We have the hope in God's power to rewrite the strip and to deliver his people. The book of Exodus is a story of people who overcome. It's a story of people who survive the struggles. Uh, the book of Exodus, if you look at chapters 1 through 40, you will realize that, that God does not forget about his people. God does not forsake his people. God leaves us. He does not leave us. He does not leave his people without hope. Yes, yes, yes. We are people, and we've gone through a lot of things, a lot of hard times, a lot of struggle, yet there is hope. There is hope that God will enable us to overcome the barriers and the inhumane treatment that we have faced and still experiencing in many parts of the United States, especially here in the South. 
no other race has experienced a barrier that they are set up that has been designed to keep us back, to bound us, to segregate us, to depress us, to oppress us, to suppress us, to down, just keep us downhearted, and to discourage us. Yet there is hope in spite of all of those things, in spite of what we have gone through, in spite of what we face, there is hope. God is with us. And God is able to see us through. And God has seen us through. And he will never leave. He will never forsake us. Through the danger, through the toil, and through the circumstances we have gone through, God continues to prove himself to be strong and mighty in battle. When our backs are against the wall and there's no one seen to come to our rescue, God sends his angel. God comes to our rescue. And God will use any and everybody he needs to to deliver his people. And I believe someone today is going to hear this word can be a witness that God has proven himself to be strong and mighty in battle. Although our enemy have come against us with great force, and yet we're still here. We're still standing. And we can testify. I can testify. There is hope. Hallelujah. There is hope. When, 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 when you had a point, you ready to give in, ready to throw in the towel, then God will show up and deliver you. Not, not only does God come through for you, but God enables you to bounce back. Hallelujah. And not only do you bounce back, but you strive. You're able to come forward. Grind. Hallelujah. I said, thank you, Lord, for giving us a bounce back spirit. I thank you, Lord, for helping us to thrive in spite of what they're trying to do. And I praise God because, you know, praise confuse the enemy. I can remember growing up in the country and, and living, we lived in the country and we had this little old wooden church. We had to, many people walk to church. We, we started out walking, but well, God blessed us to get a car. But, but you can be going up there in that dirt, traveling to that church and, and, and when you get to that hill, you, you still got a little piece to go, but I can hear those old saints in there. I can hear them in there singing, giving God praise. I can hear the, that their the feet just clapping and that building just rocking. And they were giving God praise. The men they were going to go home, not even have food, but yet they were giving God praise because they still felt there's hope. Many of them have sickness in their body. They didn't have no doctor. They didn't have no medicine. They didn't have no insurance. They had hope in Jesus. And they had and hope that God was going to give them sense of how to use herbs and different medicines to heal their bodies. I said, we serve a God that calls us to triumph despite the circumstances and situation that seeks to hold us down, to hold us back, to bind us and depress us. You know, hope, real hope is like an anchor. Hope holds on tight while you're going through pure hell, while you're going through hardship, hope holds on tight. Somebody here today can testify with me that had it not been for the Lord on your side, hallelujah, you wouldn't have made it. Had not been for the Lord making a way out of no way, you wouldn't have made it. Had not been for the Lord moving on your behalf, going before you, making a way plain. Had not been for the Lord moving on somebody else's heart to provide for you, you wouldn't have made it. I said, hallelujah. I said, there is hope. Glory be to God. There is hope. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There is hope. And, and I just thank God for hope. And because we are strong people, many of those in leadership are intimidated and insecure by our strength and by our de determination to persevere. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is hope. God will deliver us from these weak, evil, wicked leaders. Oh, we got to go through the thing, but we just hold on. Glory be to God. Just hold on. I want you to know, no matter what you're going through, there is hope. Oh, yeah. There is hope. Thank you, Lord. And let the devil know that you have hope in Jesus Christ. And you begin to have hope, you start praising God. You're not praying because what you see him doing. You're praising because you have hope that he's going to work it out. Hallelujah. You have hope that he's going to see you through. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And because we know there's hope, we know Jesus is able to deliver us from those leaders and those administrations that want to take us back to the Jim Crow. They want to take us back to the days of Great Depression and inhumane treatment. Those who want to depress, oppress, suppress 
us were as a race, they will not succeed. They will not receive, succeed because there is hope and we have hope in God and we know God is still in control no matter what they try to do. And see, uh, for young people, they may not understand what the Jim Crow was all about. The Jim Crow was when they, they had all their racial segregation and they had laws on the book to keep us segregated and to keep us down. That was mostly in the South and they want to take us back to that. That's what they're trying to do right here in, this, in our state. But despite the inequality that's found throughout the nation, especially here in the South, God is still able to give us the victory over this inequality. Despite the hardness, like I said, but the more they afflict them, the more they multiplied and grew. And in spite of all of that, glory be to God, God will give us strength and power to keep on keeping on, to keep on pressing on, to keep on believing. There is hope, hallelujah, and you have hope in Jesus, hallelujah. You can open your mouth and the Holy Spirit will give you the word to say. You can open your mouth and the Holy Spirit will tell you what to say or to do, and they'll be dumbfounded, be wondering, how did you know that? You know that because God knows all things, and God knows how to reveal things to you. They can even be like like that king in his bedroom cow and, and doing strategizing. God knows all things and God will speak to your heart. God will reveal things to you when you know there's hope. There's hope in Jesus. You don't have to go around fretting and I like a good soldier. I just want you to know I declare you today that if God is for you, who can be against you? Hallelujah. I want you to know there is hope. And if God says it's going to be done, you're going to take it to the bank. It is going to be done. You just stay in the will of God. You just trust God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Even though they do things that make our lives extremely hard and extremely difficult, we can still have hope and know that God is able. Hallelujah. And just like the children of Israel, the more they afflict us, the, uh, the, the more we will grow, the more they afflict us. They tried to hold us down, uh, but we prevail. Thank you, Lord Jesus. They tried through slavery, but they couldn't hold us down. They tried through Jim Crow, but they couldn't hold us down. They tried through separate but equal, but they couldn't hold us down. They tried through poll taxes, but they couldn't hold us down. They're trying to do it now through voter suppression, but it won't work. I said, there's hope. Hallelujah. There's hope. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There's hope. Is anybody here today? Dread and refuse. To be kept back. Refuse to be kept back because you know that God want to manifest his glory through you. Are you willing to say, Lord God, I'm willing to be used by you. I believe you, Lord God. And I know if you said go forward, I can walk forward. And even if there'll be stumbling blocks, even there may be barriers there. But if you tell me to go, I'm going to trust you, Lord. I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. And as I walk forward, I know you're going to go before me, going to make the pathway plain. I remember, Lord. Lord, how you did things for me in the past and I'm reminded of how God did the children of Israel when they were even leaving Egypt. God told them to go forth and he didn't lead them around but he led them through the Red Sea. Hallelujah. Sometimes we have Red Seas experiencing and we don't need to be a fearful. We need to just stand there and trust God and just like God told Moses to hold his area and he put it there, he put that staff there and God let a wind came and God let the wind blew the water back and the water stood up on each side and the children of Israel were able to walk through on dry land. Hallelujah. I said there's hope when your enemy is trying to come up on you. When your enemy is trying to attack you. If you trust God he'll do just like he did with Pharaoh. When Pharaoh tried to walk that same path. God let the water come back down and drown him. Hallelujah. There's hope. Just trust God. God will make a way out of no way. Hallelujah. If God is for you who can be against you. I'll let you know they may do things and they may win a war but they won't they may win the battle but they won't win the war and they won't win the war because Jesus is our captain hallelujah and because Jesus is our captain hallelujah we on a winning team hallelujah hallelujah I'm almost finished here I got a few more points I got to make as we look at what the word says in, in Exodus chapter 1 Verse 15, uh, well, verse 16, he says, and, and when you do the office of a midwife 
to the Hebrew women and see them upon the stool. If it be a son, then ye shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then ye shall let her live. And the word says in verse 17, but the midwife feared God and they did not, uh, and they did not as the king of Israel, I'm an Egypt, as the king of Israel commanded them, but save the men child alive. And I want to, next few men, I'm going to spend some time talking about that. See, Satan doesn't quit. If he doesn't get you one way, he coming another way. And so they, 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 they couldn't uh, stop them. So what he said, you know, because they first thought about making their work hard, making life difficult for them. And the more punishment and severe treatment they gave them, the greater they grew. He's okay. I see what we got to do. We're going to stop it at, at the birth. When a, when a boy child is born, kill that boy child. But for the girl, let her live. And see that same tactic going on now. The very people that's been sworn to, to protect us are killing our black boys and our black men at an alarming pace. See, see, see that tactic Satan had then, he's still using that tactic. Our black boys and black men are being killed by police officers. If they're not being killed by police officers, they're being killed by other people, including black people. You know, as he said, I, uh, it, when, when you're doing your duty as a midwife, when you go to deliver that Hebrew mother, uh, she's about to have that child. If that child is a boy child, I want you to kill that child because they say to was said, if I can kill the men, if I can kill these boys, they'll never grow up to be men. And these daughter will can't have husband and they can't have, have to continue that powerful race. Hallelujah. That's what he said. And, and he's saying you, you can let the girls live on because we can use them. We can abuse them. We can have our way with them. And see, that's what they did in slavery. They, they used our women. They slept with our women. They had babies by women women and then they did whatever they want to do with our women they still want to do that same thing today uh but they said that pharaoh said kill the boy and so uh by, by, by killing our black boys and our black men or incarcerating them see that's the plan if you can't kill them then you incarcerate them and if you do that over and over again within a few generations the, you'll be able to the evil force will come against you and be able to shut down their race and severely uh control the offspring and I want you to know here that that the same thing is happening, that the government, police officers, and the streets are severely impairing our black families. You have black families that, that, that can't even uh, let the black man be a part of the family openly. You got a lot of women lying, saying that men are not a part of that family because they say they're a part of the family. They get cut off. They won't have, won't be able to get government assistance for their housing. They won't be able to get government assistance for their food. They won't be able to get government assistance for their medical care. They won't be able to get the voucher for the children to go to school and all these things. A child care service. See, see, there's a society set up to work against that black man. If you can get that black man at the family, you can get that black man broken down then you can have control over this powerful race uh, like i said this is okay to let the girls live but kill the boy kill the boy this this is why i said kill the boy this is why i still use that strategy kill the boy will give be able to allow them to regulate these people after a little while kill the boy will be able they'll be able to keep things on track like they wanted, kill the boys, they'll be able to maintain their empire and retain their white privileges. Kill the boys, they'll be able to stay in power. Uh, that's, that's why I said kill the immaterial of the world. You know, you got those immaterials of the world, you want to kill them. You want to kill a mama Amory. You want to kill him. You want to kill, kill the Tamon uh, Martin. You want to kill the George Floyd of the world, even down to Tyree Nichols. You want to kill these. And there's so many other black men have lost their lives and, and, and kill the black black males and when you kill the black male you shut the people down when you kill the black male because and you, you say you're excellent in saying that they don't deserve to live because they're a threat to our power structure they're a threat to, a threat to our empire our empire and they are a threat to our ability to retain control uh kill the black male and, and, and then you'll be able to erase them and their influence hopefully that's what you're trying to do uh, and, and that will allow them to maintain their power. And, and, and that's what Satan is still trying to do by killing the black males 
of our society. You'll take away uh, their financial power. You'll take away their political power. You'll take away their intellectual power. You'll take away their productivity. They will be a true, able to achieve otherwise. And by taking them out, because you're intimidated, you're by their power and their strength of the black man. By doing this, you said, we can't let them go to college because their black man goes to college and get that degree and use their mind and the sky is the limit. You're saying stop them because then we got to stop them and the way to stop it is by killing them or putting them in prison and you do one or the other then therefore you'll hinder them from being able to reach their full potential and there is no stopping to them when they become a mighty force and then become a mighty force that change our world so what they have decided to do is to kill them or incarcerate them so they cannot reach their full potential and they do that because the black male is a threat to their power structure the threat to their empire is a threat to their superiority is a threat to their maintaining uh, uh, their privileges and entitlement they talk a lot about us feeling entitled people but they act more and feel more entitled than we do hallelujah we are worked and paid for the things that we get that even look wrong from the table we get and we as parents principals teachers pastors preachers leaders and community. We got to take care of our black boys and we got to cultivate their mind. And as we cultivate their mind, hallelujah, they will be able to reach their potential God has designed for them to do. And we got to make sure we don't let the street kill our black boys. We got to make sure we don't let the empire kill our black boys and incarcerate them. We got to make sure we don't let drug kill our black boys. And we got to even make sure the church don't fail our black boys. We got to make sure the church don't devalue our black boys. We have to make sure the black family don't disrespect our black boys and break them down. Too many of our boys are being taught that you're nobody, you just like your dad, you're no good, all this stuff tearing it down. We got to stop doing that. We got to build our boys up, let them know they were kings before they were taken here. They were kings and they were leaders and they're still those same things. They are the head and not the tail. And we got to make our black boys and our black girls understand that. He said, kill the boys, but leave the girls. But see, I want to understand too, don't count our girls out. Our black girls, um, when they grow up with black women, they too will be able to change the world. And they change in such an alarming rate. So please hear me, hear me well. There's so much potential in our black girls and our black boys. Our black girls will grow up into adulthood. And when they do, they'll transform the world. Our black girls will grow up and become a Michelle Obama. Our black girl will grow up and become a Maxine Waters. Our black girls will grow up and become a Barbara Jordan. Our black girl will grow up and become a Kamala Harris. Our black girl will grow up and become a Conte, uh, Contia uh, Brown Jackson. I messed her name up, but you know what I'm talking about. The first Supreme Court justice, black female justice. Uh, uh, Monica Tagore, uh, Shonda Rhyme, uh, Oprah Winfrey, uh, Sister Tyson, uh, April Ryan, and uh, Serena Williams. Uh, Simone Bauer, uh, and the list goes on, Bishop Jacqueline McCoy, uh, Sarah Jake Roberts, or Dr. Jenny Stewart, and the list goes on and on. These are just a few black women that, that, that we will, can grow, our children, our black girls can grow up, become someone like them, or even greater. Hallelujah. They can come grow up and be God's chosen leader. And if you let our black girls grow up, they'll uh, become what God will have them, because our black girl will grow up to be a mentor. You know, so many of our children grow up and their mother or their mentor uh, or their sisters or their supervisor their sister or the one they look to uh, for other guidance hallelujah so I said don't count the black girls out we need to make sure our black boys are, are protected but we got to protect our girls too because there are people now will hurt our girls just as quickly and hurt our boys and they'll use our boys just like they're girls and they'll use our girls uh, for their own entertainment and pleasure so we got to protect our girls and we got to protect Protect our boy. Hallelujah. I said, when we live and reverence God, uh, we become the head and not the tail. When we worship God Almighty, we have hope and trust that God will fight our battles and God will guide us through the pathway of life. When we worship the true and living God, then we know God is bigger than white privileges. We know that God is bigger than racism. We know that God is bigger than segregation. I said, there is hope. Hallelujah. There is hope. Hallelujah. There is hope. 
Praise be to God. Hallelujah. And see, God's word super rule, and God has a final authority. Our God is bigger than any system or structure that man can set up. And so I just want you to know there is hope today. There is hope in Jesus. No matter what it looks like or what the naysayer may uh, proclaim, I want you to know I've come here today to tell you there is hope. There is hope in God. There is hope in God. And we have hope in God that will change our trajectory and our outcome of our situation. Hallelujah. And I just want God to know I give him praise right now. And I pray you just lift up your hand and, and give God praise for the things that he's already done. And we're praising God because God, if your life is like mine, God has always put somebody in my life to help steer me in the right direction. Even when I was not in the will of God, even when I was doing things my own way and wasn't even seeking for God. God had people in my life that were praying me alone. God had people in my life that were chastising me so I wouldn't get too far out of the will of God. Hallelujah. I thank God for the people he put in my life who was standing in the gap for me when I didn't have sense not to stand in God before God for myself. I just thank the Lord. Hallelujah. I said there's hope. There's hope. Glory. There is hope in God. Oh, yes, Lord. There's hope in God and a God who can do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask or think. I said, there is hope. There is hope in God to make a way out of no way. There is hope in God when the doctors turn their backs on you and walked away. I said, there is hope. There is hope in God when your family and friends have walked away from you. I said, there is hope. There is hope when your child has turned to the world and all you can do is cry, cry, cry to the Lord. There is hope. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on your child. There is hope when 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 your back is against the wall. There is hope when you're about to on the edge of losing everything. There is hope when Satan's trying to destroy your marriage. There is hope when your family being pulled apart. There is hope when things are going south. There is hope when your church seems to be pulling apart or going in the wrong direction. I said there is hope. There is hope no matter what the enemy may try to do. I know God to be strong and mighty and better. I know God is greater. I know God is mighty. So whatever you face it, just look up and call on the name of Jesus. I said there is hope. There is hope. There is hope in God. There is hope no matter what we're facing. He is a healer. He's a deliverer. He's our savior. So whatever you need, just call on the name of the Lord. There is hope. Yes, Lord. There is hope. I thank the Lord for not giving up on me. I thank the Lord that others pray me when I can pray for myself. I said there is hope. So if your family is going through, just continue to have hope. Just continue to believe in God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hey, yeah. Now the God of hope. Hallelujah. He will fill you with joy and peace in believing. I said there is hope. And when you trust God, the hope will abound. It will grow and intensify. Just like the more they press on the people, the more we cry out to God, the stronger we become. The more we spend time with God, reading his word, studying his God, his word, then God will increase our faith. We will become spiritual giants. We will be able to stand just like uh, David was able to stand against Je uh, Goliath. The, uh, the other people was afraid, but because David had hope, David knew God was with him. And see, when you know God is with you, no matter who coming against you, I said, there is hope. There is hope. God will see you through. The enemy can be plotting against you. The enemy can surround you. There is hope. I know for a fact, I know there's hope. There have been times in my life that the enemy was all set me up and I didn't have no way out but oh glory as I cried on the name of, called on the name of the Lord and cried out to God. God made a way out of no way. I said there's hope. He is a God that's able to open doors where you can't see. He's a God that's able to open up and pour you out a blessing. You will have room enough to receive it. Whatever you need, I said cry out to God. There is hope. Yes, we are the people. We are going through some things, but there is hope 
trust God, and we got to make sure we protect our black boy and protect our black girl. Hallelujah. Satan's trying to destroy our children, but we got to cry out to God. We got to go back to the Lord and cry out and say, Lord, show me how. Help me to know and understand how to touch this child, how to reach this child. And you've done all you can do. Just continue to stay before the Lord and just continue to pray and trust God. God know how to watch over them and you can't be with them. God know how to talk to them in that dream. God know how to use other people to reach them because he did it for you. He did it for me. And I just thank God. Hallelujah. I said there is hope. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Hallelujah. Yes, he'll bring us out. Hallelujah. That's why I can stand before you today and say there is hope. No matter what we're facing, no matter how big and insurmountable it may seem, no matter how long we've been facing it, there is hope. God will see us through. God will bring us through. God is a healer. Hallelujah. God is a deliverer. God is a restorer. God is a lifter. You may have been bowed down, but God is a lifter. God will open the door. Whatever we need God to do, he will do it. Just continue to believe. Just continue to trust him. I said there is hope. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to encourage you right now. You may be facing some things in your life that may be undesirable. Some may be totally out of your control. And some may be a product of your own doing or choice you've made. But whatever the reason that has placed you there, I want you to know there is hope. Hallelujah. I want you to know that there is hope in Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. And Jesus is all powerful. And as we realize, there is hope in Jesus. And that hope brings joy to our heart. And that hope gives us peace. And see, God's love abounds. And I just want you to know through the power of the Holy Ghost, God will strengthen you to face whatever you're going through. So I just want you to encourage you, there is hope. And if you believe there is hope. And you know that God is going to get the glory. And you know that you're on a winning team. Just stand with me. And you just stand and telling God, although we're going through some things, and although we see our world being so evil, we see how sin is infesting our world. We see how, how the foundation of uh, the fiber of our society being pulled and shredded. We see the things that used to be something you can count on is it's being replaced with deception and lies, all these things. And we see how people's lives are devalued. And we see how our children are, are so much in danger. Angel, I want you to know there's hope. And you stand and you're just telling God, Lord, I, I have faith in you. Lord, I believe your word. Just like you delivered Daniel. Just like you you saw Jeremiah through. Just like you uh, covered and chose, uh, took care of your Israel like the people of Israel, the children of Israel. I know you do that same for me. My, you may be going through in your family. Or you may have family members going through. There may be somebody that's dear to you that's suffering through with some type of illness or whatever it may be. I want you to know there's hope and don't give up on Jesus. God will come through for you. God will see you through and God will uphold you. So even though the enemy may be trying to make you doubt God, make you distrust the very word of God, I want you to know there's hope. Your breakthrough is through your faith and through your trust in God and through the hope. There's hope in God. There's hope. Perhaps someone is listening and, and you are at your wit's end. You're about to give up. You don't see no way out. I want you to know there's hope. And you can call our prayer line and our prayer team is available to pray with you. And we will encourage you through the word of God. We'll share scripture with you. We'll pray with you. We'll, we want you to know there is hope. That number is 1-866-395-6873. That's one 1-866 three nine five six eight seven three let us pray father god we thank you for hope we thank you there's hope 
there's hope in you there's hope in your word there is hope and we know no matter how bad it may look and how fierce the enemy may come against us you are greater you are mightier than any uh racism segregation you're mightier than any force that try to take us down or depress us or oppress us or suppress us whatever the case may be you are mightier you're stronger so through the opposition through the depression and through the uh, suppression and through the uh, all the things that the enemy is trying to do to make us weaker we make us stronger Lord God and help us to trust you help us to have hope let us know that you are still God you the God of Abraham but you also the God that can be there for us now so we just give you praise and we thank you for the blessed hope and the ultimate hope is salvation you coming back for your people and we continue to have this hope we will be able to have eternal life and live with you forevermore so we thank you lord god for your people that are standing we thank you for all those that are listening and raising their hands lord we know that there is hope and that hope is in you and we bless you we give you praise and glory in jesus name we thank you lord amen amen god